want to get to this next problem. I want to get to this next problem. All right, so if we've got a block A that is on top of B, and block A has a mass of 50 kilograms, block B has a mass of 10 kilograms, the coefficients of friction between blocks A and B are 0.5 and 0.3. Uh, neglect any friction uh, between block B and the ground. Find the acceleration of each block when a force of 300 newtons is applied to the block. Okay, let's see. Shannon, can I borrow your table? Y'all y'all have to make, make friends uh, real closely. Uh, so, uh, you know, if you have two blocks, and kind of a red flag was they gave us a mu s and a mu k. Because I'm not sure what's what's happening right here. Right? I'm not sure what is happening uh, with these two blocks, right? Because I think two things could happen, right? If I'm if we're pulling force P, you know, if we're starting if we're pulling force P over here. Maybe they're moving together, right? And the force of friction between the two would be anywhere from zero up to a maximum of mu s n, right? Because there, there would be no slipping between the two. So I kind of have two scenarios. I have one scenario where maybe they're moving together. Um, and so the force of friction between the two could be anywhere from zero to mu s times n. Uh, but if maybe that force P is, is strong enough, that what would happen, right? That they would slip, and so then the force of friction would be mu k n. When they slip, when they slip, the acceleration of this one will be different from the acceleration of this one, but when they were moving together, the, the acceleration was the same. Uh, so how can you, I don't know, figure out which, which what is happening? There, there, there are different ways. I've got a way that always works, okay? And you can look on the next page. because I, I, gave, I gave enough of these will it slip type problems that I, I kind of went ahead and gave you my formula, my method, I'm going to assume they don't slip, okay? So I'm going to assume they don't slip. So what does that mean? That means they move together. So I'm going to write this down. Uh, so I'm going to assume they don't slip. And so then ask yourself, what does that mean? Does that mean the acceleration is zero? Not in this case. In this case, that means the acceleration of A is equal to the acceleration of B. So it still has some acceleration. Okay. So I'm going to make this assumption and I'm going to do all my calculations. Right? I'm going to assume they don't slip. I'm going to do all my calculations. I'm going to solve the problem. But after you solve the problem, I'm going to have to prove that my assumption was correct. And how can I prove that my assumption was correct? As long as the force of friction between the two is anywhere from zero to mu s times n, then I'm golden. My assumption was correct. I'm done with the problem. Uh, but if I've solved it, I gave you my answer. I said the acceleration is this, but then I go back and prove it. And I go back and solve for the force of friction between the two. And if I find that the force of friction between the two is too high, then my assumption was incorrect. It slides out from under it. Let's I'll draw a few free body diagrams real quick. All right, so how about this? If they're moving together, I'm going to draw a free body diagram of them together. All right, so I've got the weight of, we'll call it 60 times 9.81. I've got the normal force. Now, this right here, that N right here, that is the normal force of the ground pushing up on block B. Is there a normal force between A and B? Yes. I'm not going to draw it on this free body diagram. Why? 
It's internal. Yeah, it's both of them are feeling each other one touching it. So if I drew the normal force, I need to draw the normal force of A on B, but also of B on A. They're equal and opposite, so they're internal right here. Um, I'm going to draw this 300. There is no for force of friction right underneath B. Is there a force of friction between A and B? Yes. Am I going to draw it on here? No. Why? It's internal, right? Block A feels the force of friction one direction. Block B feels the force of friction equal and opposite in the other direction. All right, so if you do this, if you draw two things that are moving together, uh, don't draw any internal forces. So this really simplifies down. Uh, the, for, the Summing the forces in X is 300. Uh, it equals mass times acceleration in X, acceleration in X, is five that might be my answer but i've got to prove it all right i made an assumption and i've got to prove my assumption how can i prove it solve 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 for force of friction between a and b and compare to the maximum What is the maximum force of friction? Uh, mu s times n. How can I solve for the force of friction? It's not on my free body diagram. I can't use that free body diagram I just drew to solve for it. So now I'm going to separate it. I'm only going to look at A. All right, I'm only going to look at A. What forces do I have acting on a right because if i only look at a then i'm kind of opening up that internal and so then my force friction will be on this free body diagram so what forces are acting on the free body diagram for a how about the weight of a how about the normal force now this normal force is different from this normal force right that normal force up there was the force of the ground on b this normal force is the normal force of B on A. Very different. Very different. Uh, okay. And lastly, before we do a little exercise, uh, what direction is the force of friction? At your table, left or right, what direction is the force of friction on A that A feels? So talk about it on your table. Y'all need these. Boxes. Remember, we're assuming they're moving together. Um, Are there any force, other forces I need to draw on here besides the force of friction? No, I mean, that's it. The only force lacking is the force of friction. Do y'all know which direction A is moving? Do you know which direction A is moving or accelerating? You know, if you know what direction A is moving, the force of friction is the only thing that is making A go. Y'all know that in a car, what is really pushing you forward? It's the force of friction between your tires and the car. If you're going forward, you're accelerating forward, the force of friction, you know, is pushing you forward. It's a little counterintuitive, but at your tables, did, did you agree that the force of friction is that direction? The force of friction is that direction. I thought it opposes motion. I know that A is moving to the right. How come the force of friction is to the right? Right? Doesn't force of friction oppose motion, but A is moving to the right, and I just said the force of friction was to the right. The force of friction opposes the relative motion between A and B, right? And relative to B, 
A wants to move backwards, right? You know, A wants to move backwards relative to B. Uh, so this is where the force of friction opposes the relative impending motion. A wants to slide back on B, uh, but the force of friction is keeping it up. If we were to draw the free body diagram for B, if we were to draw the free body diagram for B, the force of friction would be the same value, but it would be that way. Also, this N of A on B, it's pushing A up. Uh, it, it would be the same value N, uh, but it would be pushing down on B, uh, which we'll talk about in a, a second. But y'all know what this reminds me of? I don't know. Does this remind y'all, right, you know, when, when you pull this fast enough, you know, it slips out from under it. Uh, so I want y'all to do this this weekend. You're out on a date uh, with somebody. All right, fancy restaurant. Fancy restaurant. 